Be better, be like Helldivers. Call of Duty has a new King Kong themed microtransaction in quotes that asks players to fork out an eye-watering $80 in COD points. What? How's that even possible? First of all, it says 2,400 COD points in here, which I'm like, that's not $80. But now I'm just really confused. Oh, okay, this is to get the glove. Oh, okay, this is to get this glove right here, which apparently just like one taps people, which there's plenty of one hit melee weapons within Call of Duty, so there's nothing weird about that. It's kind of funny that you just like punch him right in the face. You have a big like gorilla, gorilla hand, like that's awesome. To get this gor gorilla hand, <laughs> you need to buy four four separate $2,400 COD point bundles to unlock the glove. In game, this is called the Titan Collection and the Beast Glove is the exclusive reward for completing it. <laughs> Are you really completing it when you buy into multiple packs? That's more just buying into it. 2,400 COD points costs $19.99. You need to buy 9,600 COD points in total to complete the Titan Collection and obtain the glove. But the fact remains that if you want to play with the glove and you have a little to no COD points on your account, you face forking up a lot of money, potentially more than Call of Duty Modern for three cost itself. That's insane, dude. <laughs> what? That's egregious. <laughs> $80 to get this glove. Like, it's an awesome glove, too. But you have to buy four separate packs, dude. And from what it looks like, you don't even get changed back either. Like, a lot of times with these more expensive COD bundles, you get a little bit of cash back when you buy into them. But that doesn't seem to be the case when it comes to this. You just get your normal, you get your normal blueprints and a character scan. And you get this melee weapon if you buy all four. <laughs> if you thought Halo Infinite's microtransactions were bad, whoo! Imagine if that happened in Halo, dude. Oh my god. You'd be seeing articles written like this. Some players are now wondering if Activision is testing the waters f with a new type of cosmetic that if the glove is successful, more type of stuff would be included. If you buy more, you know, stuff, you get bonuses along with it, which is, I mean, it's an incentive to get people to do it. Action Division makes hundreds of millions of dollars off Call of Duty microtransactions on top of the price of the game. While it ditched loot boxes some time ago, the cosmetic bundles that have replaced them often spark uh, debate with in the game community. Act, you don't need to engage with it, right? Go, you know what? This ain't for me. I'm just not going to buy it which totally makes sense. I get that. But the thing is that like it's out there, right? And I think that the community is right to think about it when it comes to this $80 glove for a melee weapon. I can't believe someone actually bought the fact that people even bought this is a problem. Like if this works out right, if people buy into it just to get this glove for $80, that it shows that they can do this with other type of bundles and if we know anything about Activision, they can be uh, a little aggressive <laughs> when it comes to their microtransactions within the game. It honestly is concerning. You know that they're going to keep doing it as well. We saw this happen previously, honestly, when it came to the pay to win stuff with DMZ. When they first implemented the uh, like DMZ perks, right? Call of Duty fans hit out a DMZ's most egregious pay to win bundle yet. This was, I think, honestly, like it was a serious like pay to win mechanic within, in, in, within DMZ. I think the first one came around where like you just get like your insured weapon back within 15 15 minutes instead of having to wait an hour though with most of the stuff when it came to the insured weapons in dmz that like if you know how to regain quickly you can get it back next game which usually takes you about 15 to 20 15 to 30 minutes to get through one game still it's like you don't even have to bother with that that's literally an advantage to be able to jump back in with your insured weapon that was the blueprint weapon that you need to jump back in with which kind of makes sense to tie it in with that but still it's like and then they kind of kept going with it the community was not happy about it but they kept rolling with it until the point where then you had this operator right here which gave you a free uav just at spawn which uavs were a massive advantage in dmz now if you're a good player you can figure out ways to get around it uavs were like the number one thing you use to try to figure out what player locations were to get kills i played a lot of dmz i love the mode it's a shame they didn't continue it but it was pretty rough honestly but that's literally that's literally an advantage you get in game on people there's a reason why people buy uavs because it's an advantage having a uav in dmz was is an legit advantage that's the reason why you have to you earn in-game currency to buy it to in the in the in-game currency at the in-game store to then be able to take advantage of it and push players and get more kills like if you're pushing a stack of team a, a, a team stack you're going to get use a uav that's a legit advantage that's now obviously it leads you up to skill to what you do with that uav and how well you perform so you don't instantly win but it's a pay to win mechanic absolutely it's like the bundle right here was you get this operator 
and then you get uh, two blueprints. You get an extra slot, which is actually kind of nice. Not a pay-to-win mechanic, but a nice increase to what you can play around with in the game. And a free UAV. So it's not the first time Activision, Blizzard, Call of Duty, whoever is making the game, have implemented something that's a little egregious when it comes to microtransactions. At least with like this King Kong hand, right? That it doesn't affect gameplay. It's just a melee weapon, but it's $80. <laughs> it costs more than the actual game. If you just got the base level stuff, as long as it stays in cosmetic, then it's like, it's okay. But you know, there's gonna be like some cosmetic that people are really going to want. That'd be like, oh, a ghost mask that you can put on your character, some classic weapon model. And they'll be like, yeah, but you have to buy it four other packs to be able to get this unlocked. It's a concerning trend. And I just hope that this, it stays at this. If it stays at this, I can live with it. You know, it's not gameplay altering. It's just a cosmetic, but we do know that Activision has a, a trend to be a little egregious when it comes to their microtransactions. That's really all it is. It's just concerning. But the fact that it's even an option and people out there have paid it is crazy again it's like if if call of duty is the only game that you play then fine whatever you know it, you can make it worth it then if you call of duty is your only game that you play and of course so you take in mind that you do get those four other bundles worth of content as well but so it's like one little extra thing while the headline is accurate it is a little misleading so people are not spending 80 dollars just for that singular thing they're paying 80 dollars to also get that thing it's the phrase you know you boil the frog kind of thing that's kind of what it feels like with that. If you put a frog in boiling hot water, it jumps right out. If you put a frog in cold water and then turn up the heat, they won't jump out. And that's kind of what microtransactions in video games have felt like over the past 10, cl close to 10 years now at this point. I think loot boxes really died like back in 2017, right? With Star Wars Battlefront 2. Seven years, right? Microtransactions have been like the main source of uh, income from games, right? But since like 2018, back when Fortnite kind of blew up with battle passes and microtransactions. We're still getting more and more egregious. That pendulum will eventually swing too far to one direction where people just had enough of it. That's what we had with the loot box situation when it came to Star Wars Battlefront 2, where they just kept pressing it and pressing it to the point where it was like, that was just game breaking pay to win mechanics that were randomized in Star Wars Battlefront 2. And that was the, the game industry changed after that game, which is a shame because Battlefront 2 is such a good game. But then it just got marred by the microtransactions, which is sad. Right now when it comes to microtransactions, like Battle Pass and regular microtransactions, I think where we're at right now is that we're still kind of on that upswing to eventually the community will hit a breaking point. We're getting close to it. We see some microtransactions out there that are like, that's wild. Don't do that. And, you know, there is some pushback individually from like the community that plays that game. We, we haven't had an industry wide pushback when it comes to battle passes and microtransactions, but it's going to happen eventually. And it's just a matter of when that pushback will happen. I am kind of getting a little tired of the whole like live service battle pass model when it comes to a lot of games because they're so time consuming. That's the main thing we've noticed within the last like five to eight years of gaming that developers or publishers are really valuing players time more than anything than actual money because the money will come if you get them playing your game. And so you want to get them in a way to where they keep playing it. We're like going through a battle pass is a, is a grind, right? I've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare 3 and going through that battle pass as a free-to-play player is a grind. It is a lot of game time to get through that. Compared to Halo, you can get through that battle pass or operation passes relatively soon. Like with it, honestly, like if you really grind it, if you only played Halo, focus on the challenges and stuff like that, you can probably get through like that 50 tier pass like within a week. The 20 tier passes you can get within like a couple days, honestly. We're in Call of Duty, you have like a hundred tiers. They're all in different sectors and it takes like months to get through. Short enough to where you can do it if you just kind of play regularly. But if you're a casual player that like will play for a week, hop off for two weeks, play for another week, you're not getting through that battle pass at all. And it's, it's tiring <laughs> to see so many of these games that, that I love playing, but they're just, they utilize the same mechanics, the same time amount of time sync and dedication that makes me just not want to play the games. It's just like, it gets, it gets tiring, man. It makes me want to just be like a single player type of gamer just because of how much these microtransactions and battle passes are being pushed on the players. But and we'll have to wait and see. Like I said, the pendu the momentum still put game pushed to more egregious microtransactions and battle passes and taking up more time to play and all that kind of stuff. Things aren't getting easier. The only game that's really breaking that mold is Hell Divers 2. They're doing amazing things when it comes to their live service. It's really what every game out there should be looking at because it's incredible what they're doing 
because you have like community based progression when it comes to your battle pass. You have a free pass and you have your premium passes and you progress your free pass by just utilizing war bonds. And how do you get war bonds? By completing mission objectives and mission objectives get completed by the community. If the community liberates a planet within X amount of time, everyone that's a player gets 20 war bonds or whatever, or 15 war bonds to make progression. So like I logged into Helldivers 2 the other day I haven't really played a whole lot in the last couple weeks because I've been playing like new Halo update, I've been playing new Call of Duty update. I come back and I'm like, wow, I have 250 war bonds that I just got because the community kicks ass. Makes me feel like I don't have to individually grind so hard to make some form of progression, to get unlocks, to just enjoy the game, you know? Be better. Be like Helldivers.